Welcome to a very special Women of Xbox UK video discussion. Today we're celebrating International Women's Day and the theme of this year's International Women's Day is Choose Challenge. So I'm very, very excited to be a part of this discussion. Um, so I'd like to introduce you to, first of all, the wonderful Mary McGuain, who is Chief of Staff at Xbox Game Studios. Hi, Mary. Hi. I've got Nina Christensen, who is Co-Founder and Chief Development Ninja at Ninja Theory. And finally, we've got the wonderful Rose Boyan, who is the Senior Category Manager at Xbox. Welcome, Hi. ladies. Um, so today is International Women's Day. So I thought we could start chatting about, and I'd love to learn a little bit more about your journeys into the games industry and where you are now. Um, so um, Nina, let's start with you because you have a really interesting journey. I believe you used to be in the graphic side of things and obviously you became a co-founder uh, of the amazing studio that is Ninja Theory. How did you get to, how did you co-found a whole entire studio? Oh, well, um, I, th I think a lot of it is uh, just being um, probably a little bit naive and quite ambitious at the same time. Um, I, I did start out as a, a graduate artist. That's how I first started in games, um, which was awesome. And after about after about four years uh, in the industry, I'd sort of moved into more management-y type positions and um, someone I worked with uh, approached me and said, do you want to start a company? And I said, sure. <laughs> and, 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 and I think, and like, actually, I, th I think this is quite a good point though, because I, for me, starting a company seemed quite natural and um, I'm from Australia originally, and in Australia, it like it's quite common for people to start companies and have side businesses. And as part of my degree, um, I studied industrial design. Part of my degree was about how you start business. So it, it was it wasn't a sort of a like a big scary leap. Obviously, it was a big move, but uh, it was like sure, I'm young, I've got no commitments, and um, I think we could do a good job of it. So yeah, absolutely. So you have. <laughs> Amazing. Um, Mary, what about you? Because you've obviously come, you know, through a very different, um, different way than, than Nina and Rose. So how did you? How did you end up as chief of staff at Xbox Game Studios? <laughs> Well, I love this question because uh, it certainly wasn't a straight line, right? It's been more like Katamari Damashe of me just rolling this ball and getting experience and background and skills and knowledge, which has like led to more and more opportunities. I um, actually have a background in journalism. That's what I got my degree in. And before I graduated, I was working professionally as a writer, doing music and entertainment and on the radio. And then after I graduated, I was working for a startup publication in the Silicon Valley, and it folded, as they're wont to do. And uh, I took what I thought at that time would be this short-term gig doing human resources, and I ended up loving it. I ended up having a great mentor and really enjoying being part of like a big business and learning how all the little pieces work. 2001, I came to Microsoft and started working with the Xbox Silicon team, and they were designing the chips for Xbox 360. A few years later, I moved up to Seattle and started working with the leadership team that was shipping Xbox 360 and working on Xbox Live. And um, and it was a wild ride. You know, it was a ton of fun. It was a lot of challenges, a lot of new work. Um, enjoy the people, enjoy being in gaming. And then after we shipped, one of the VPs said, hey, would you be interested in making a career change and leaving HR and coming and working on the business side and be my business manager? And I helped him run about a thousand person organization, right? And um, and the rest, as they say, is kind of history. I've sort of taken roles that have been very similar, but very progressive um, in nature that have done, uh, had to do with gaming and running large, or, excuse me, large organizations. Um, and it's been a blast. Yeah, um, that's amazing. And Rose, you have, well, you've, you've worked at some other studio that, that isn't Xbox before before this. But again, you've got very different, 
different journey into industry. Um, I, I, and you've been doing this a long time as well. So how did you get here? Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I fell into to gaming. I um, I did a marketing and, and psychology degree at university, but I wasn't quite sure, as most people are, um, how I was going to use it to craft my career. And I just saw an advert in a high street recruiter, not even a specialist games recruiter. And it was for an international games coordinator. And it just so happened to be at IDOS. Um, I applied and got the job and that became my entrance into the industry. And, you know, I fell in love with the industry and I've stayed in the industry since, you know, around 20 years now. And I've held mostly marketing positions, sales and marketing positions, mostly marketing in in large and indie publishers such as Warner Brothers and PlayStation, et cetera, uh, <laughs> Digital, uh, and now Xbox. I've been at Xbox for a year now and I love it. That's amazing. I love that. I think it's so interesting because we kind of caught up a little bit last week, didn't we? We were like, I think most of us, well, all of us fell into games, the games industry by accident. <laughs> I remember so, like, because for me, because, um, so my background is in art and animation and I started, I trained as a classical animator and I wanted to, you know, my dream, like since I was like two, I wanted to be a Disney animator. I'm a huge geek when it comes to animation. And um, so I went to this college in Dublin that is like, um, they used to work, like they used to have a studio called Sullivan Bluth in Dublin and they made like, a, you might not remember these, but like these classic cartoons, like a, a, An American Tale and People Goes West and Thumbelina. And that was all based in Dublin because of this college and they used to feed all of the animation students. So my dream was to go to this college and then my dream was to be plucked out of this college and go work for Disney and just do all of these big things. Um, and then um, um, I, I, a couple of my friends actually ended up coming to the UK and, and, and getting a job at Rare. Um, and they were actually my, my now husband, who's also an animator, his uh, best friend. Um, and, and myself and Jonathan um, accidentally, as you do, got pregnant while I was in college. So all of a sudden we needed like a job, like well quick. Um, so uh, our friend said, God. But our friend said, you should try this, the games industry. And we were like, the what now? And we're like, okay. <laughs> so so we both applied for, for Rare. And I remember like, because I, I, I didn't, I never thought of myself as a gamer because I was so focused on animation, but I had played, like I, Tomb Raider was the, one of the first games I ever played and I loved, I, I've always loved Lara Croft. Um, and I never thought of myself as a gamer. So it was like doing research. Goldeneye had just come out. And I started playing Goldeneye and I just became completely obsessed with Goldeneye. It was so good. I was like, <laughs> this is cool, cool job. Apply for the job and, and, and the rest is history. I've been at Rare ever, ever since. But again, it's like it's like this, you know, secret, the best, the best secret that we can keep, but we don't want to keep it. It's like everybody should apply for the games industry. It's just yeah. this incredible place to have a career and to meet great people and to just uh, the thing I love about it is just feeling really really creative and having all of that creative freedom I don't know what your thoughts are on that oh I think you're completely right it's it's the most creative thing it's it's like it's like making a film but then all this other stuff as well you know like making a film to me just seems like such an easy thing to do that's really disrespectful to the film industry and I do apologize but um, <laughs> it's sort of like that um, but with so much more that has to be considered as well and and, uh, and it almost doesn't matter what kind of job you want there is a job in games for you it's amazing I was going to touch upon what you're saying um, about it being a, Louise is saying about it being a best kept secret. Because, you know, when I was thinking when I joined industry, it was never encouraged or it was never thought of that you can carve a career in gaming. That was just never a thing, you know, and I just think that that's, that's something that we're still working on to kind of change that perception. It is, you know, I don't play games all day, which is what my friends thought when I first joined the industry, but it is a viable career, right? And it's something that we, you know, people can aspire to do. And I think it's that perception that um, hopefully has changed definitely from when I joined the industry. Yeah, I think it has changed, right, in the, in the last 20 years. There's still ways to go, right? There's still, yeah. still, we're not, there's still uh, progress to be made. But it is a, a full-on industry right now, you know, where there are all kinds of roles, you know, and, and I think in the very beginning it was you had to be a programmer, you had to be an artist or a level designer, and now they're 
full on businesses, right, that have all kinds of roles. In it. And so I think that, you know, dispelling that perception that you have to be in this very niche expertise skill in order to get into gaming, that I just want to kind of kick the door wide open and say, like, yeah, why not? Why not look at gaming? Why not, you know, have the confidence to um, do what you want to do and bring it into gaming? Yeah, because then there's a story about transferable skills, right? You know, absolutely. Because I'm, I, I work and have always worked on the publishing side. So we're talking about sales and marketing, and you know, you've got operations and finance. You know, those aren't specifically specialist game skills. But I'm still working in the industry, so again, yeah, I concur. <laughs> I think that's actually a really good point because I, I, I mean, know a lot of people, I mean, I've done it myself. I went from animation and, and now I'm a executive producer, but it is about transferable skills. I actually think you mentioned it, Mary, it's, it's, you fell in love with it because uh, a part, part of what we do is not just the creative, it's the people. And, and something I've really enjoyed is working um, with just lots of different disciplines. Yeah, to your point, Nina, I look at the film industry and go, they don't have to, you know, pull together engineering, animation, you know, all of the audio, all the tech that goes and make make this thing that somebody else is going to control and play and influence and experience and it, and everybody who plays are going to experience what you create very differently. Um, and I love that we that that's one of my favorite things and and having all of these people and the opportunity to work with all of these disciplines. Um, I think that that's what helped one of my one of the reasons I got into the kind of production side of things just because I love working with people. I love working with teams. I love encouraging people to 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 be creative and um and create great things together like it's such a, a brilliant team effort uh, do you know what that's exactly it. it it there is something so incredibly magical when such a wide range of different people all fall together um pursuing this one vision and and then delivering it to the world it, like it, it's an incredible experience mm -hmm. Yeah, and I would say, like, to build on what Nina was saying, like, the creativity comes in, in a bunch of different levels, right, that um, because you are creating something new, you know, that you do have to, like, think things through in a creative way, right? It isn't sort of a checklist of you do this, you do this, you do this. You're like, okay, so we're doing something different here. You know, even the legal team needs to be, you know, creative in their thinking, you know, yeah. like, everybody who is involved, anyone who has any fingerprint on the game has to really flex their creativity. And I think it creates this um, great environment, right? It's exciting, it's new, you're discovering, you're thinking, you're reasoning around things. And I find it, I find it super energizing. No, absolutely. Um, oh, it sounds like we really love our jobs. Like, wow. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> um, so what I actually had a thought and I, I just, because, we all do such different things in, in the industry and I quite often get asked because I, I can't remember who said it but uh, it might be new Rose or all of my friends think I just play games all day every day like I'd love to know what is your day-to-day -day feel like what does it involve especially as women who are you know who, who are um, senior being in the business a while and you know sometimes your perspective changes on what you need to be doing day-to-day -day versus <laughs> back when I was just doing animation I knew I was doing a walk cycle every single day but uh, so what is, can you describe what your day to day is? I'd, I'd be super curious to kind of know that. I should point at Mary. I'll start because if we, we don't know who, who's going to go first. How about you, Mary? <laughs> yeah, well, I, I mean, the first thing I would say is no two days are the same. Right. And I think that, you know, as you become more senior, your role becomes less about like, let me make this one thing and let me help orchestrate all of the people and in, in, in making the thing. Right. And so my day, it's just a lot of meetings. Like it sounds really boring. It's just like a lot of meetings, but uh, it's, we're making decisions. We're getting aligned. We're talking about games. We're, you know, getting current. So in my role, we have 15 different Xbox game studios, right? And so uh, it is a lot of understanding what's going on with the games, what's going on with the studios, what's going on with the people, and then sort of like, hey, what's happening in the industry? So it's a lot of staying current and also like providing direction, making decisions, and um, and then at the end of the day, I do play a lot of games. <laughs> so when it's all said and done, like I do, I do play a lot of games. What about you, Rosemary? Um, 
because it, obviously being in development, I mean, like having this insight into what you do on the marketing um, side of things, I always find super interesting. Yes, I guess I pick up the baton from all the great work that you guys do, right? You know, you create these fantastic games for us. So my my role, I'm responsible for, um, I guess, essentially bringing the games to market and putting together, conceiving a, 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 a route to market, liaising with our sales teams, ensuring that um, um, uh, we're production ready, we have a marketing plan ready. You know, I spend most of my time liaising with multiple teams to make sure that that, that route to the consumers as best as it possibly can. So that does involve marketing, but it also involves uh, finance as well, a lot of finance to get that right. Uh, as I said, sales and sales, commercial sales element as well. Uh, and also working with you guys and your respective teams just to make sure that we've got it right because also we've got a responsibility to look after the, your ip and your franchise as well um so yes yeah, so, so a lot of my time is also spent in, in meetings but it's multiple meetings because i i sit under the um emir um, regions so i'm liaising with the global team but also with the emir team as well um so yeah i guess i'm the, the central hub as a games category lead to ensure that we're we're on track everything's on track to make sure that we the games are as it should be uh, to launch in the uk and ireland awesome. and nina what about you i'm definitely curious to know for, for some day when i choose to to run a studio <laughs> <laughs> i need to learn from the best <laughs> um well, I, I would I would in part certainly echo um, both of both of you. Um, it, it's certainly a lot of meetings, but in running a studio, you need the creative side and you need the business side. And I'm on the business side of things. Um, and really, my job is fundamentally to set the strategy for the company, um, like work with the creative leader to me um, to work out what the creative vision of the company is and then work out how to actually make that reality. So um, uh, historically, a lot of it has been about making sure we get the right deals, um, for, you know, secure the correct contracts and so forth. Now as part of Xbox uh, Game Studios, um, the, it's a little bit different, but it's, it's, it's nonetheless thinking about strategically where we wanna be and how we get there. And it's taking, the, the big thing is to, the job, the job is to take the difficult decisions, to make the choices where, you know, if you're in a rock, between a rock and a hard place, where do you go? And and really having the courage when it's needed to put, to put everything on the line in an effort to get the right outcome for the team. Um, so... Uh, that like that sounds a little bit heavy, but actually, like it's exhilarating. It's absolutely exhilarating to do that, and it's and it's a huge amount of responsibility. You're responsible for, well, depending on the side of, sort of your studio, we're about a hundred. You know, you're you're responsible for those hundred jobs and and all of the networks that that live there. Um, so, yeah, it's a lot of responsibility, but it's such a joy at the same time. And yeah, a, a, a lot of meetings <laughs> come ahead of that for sure. <laughs> and they seem to be more and more, obviously because we're working from home right right now. So it's like, I'm, I'm just like always on Teams chatting to people. I've started moving around the house so that I don't get like stuck in the same space. So I feel like I'm traveling from room to room in the studio because it really, you know, um, but that's so interesting. And like, when you think about the journey that you've been on, um, just it, just to keep your conversation uh, going, Nina. Like, what do you think you've learned? As you think about, obviously, the theme of International Women's Day is choose to challenge, and it sounds like you know you like a good challenge. So, um, <laughs> oh my so, god, I would I, I would be so bored if I wasn't challenged. Like, honestly, I you know I I am the sort of person that does like the pressure, um, does like a challenge, um, and and there's something fantastic when when you have had to make a really difficult decision and you know like you know in the moment it's going to be tough it's going to be tough on you it's going to be tough on the team and that like that's always the hardest thing mm -hmm. um but you know that if you make the, that difficult choice a little bit further down the track it will be definitely for the best in the best interests of 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 the team and and for you know everything that we're trying to achieve and i yeah i 
I, I guess it's not for everyone, but I love it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think it, it, it is interesting when you think about the challenges we face doing the, the jobs that we do. Um, you definitely need to be a few steps ahead, ahead of, of right now and it's always thinking like a little bit longer term and getting comfy with making a decision now you're not going to really see the impact for until like you know six months down the line um i, I know for me my confidence in just making decisions has really really grown um and I, i'm like you i really like just being able to go in and say hey this is what we're going to go do and, and 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 i love building up to that and um, and getting informed about those decisions and working with the team to go you know face the right challenges at the right time um, um which i absolutely love um what about across the you, you across the other parts of the studios mary rose <laughs> i'll jump in i'm um yeah, I even just want to talk about what Nina was talking about, which is that, you know, um, and again, I'll go back to, you know, when I was first starting out, my decision making was like it impacted this much. Right. And then now it impacts a, a lot. And there is this. So I think optimism gets a bad rap. So I think optimism gets this bad rap. I'm like, everything's sunshine. Everything's rainbows. Like optimism for me means like if we get the right people in the room, we're going to we're going to figure this out. Like, I know we can figure this out, right? Like, it's this, like, um, sense of, like, we can do this, you know? And that is what's developed for me, like, over time. It's just, like, wow, we have a problem that no one's faced before. There isn't, like, we can't go read a Harvard, Harvard Business Review on this. Like, we have, we are the ones who have to figure it out, you know? And being, like, okay, you know? Like, we'll talk to some people. We'll, you know, reason around things. You know, we'll have a process. And I know by the time we'll get to the end of it, like, we will have made a good decision. And that's something, I think, that develops over time, right? Is that, oh, my gosh, when you face those first really big decisions that are going to have a pretty big impact, you think, oh, no, you know, like, how am I going to do this? And then once you get through it and you say, oh, well, what was the process I used? Like, who did I talk to? How did I get advice? How did I get input? Did I listen to my gut? Did I not listen to my gut? Whether it came out good or it didn't come out good, you kind of like go through it and learn and you kind of like build these new muscles. But I go back to like um, this confidence, right? This optimism that like, you know what, we'll figure it out. We've got, you know, smart people around us. We've got experienced people around us. We've got people who care about people around us, care about the business. And we're gonna we're gonna get to the end of this. I don't know what the process is gonna look like, but we're gonna get to the end of this. Mary, I think you've got like a really good point there around the optimism, because like all of the great leaders that I work with are fundamentally optimistic people, and and I think that makes that makes all of the difference. And I think we generally work in an optimistic industry yeah. uh, as well, you know, so, and, and with people who like to laugh and, and um, you know, bring, bring, bring joy to the table. Um, mm -hmm. e even when things are really tough, um, th there will still be laughs to be had. I think challenge for me, I mean, one thing, I, I love a good challenge. Uh, for me, it's really uh, pushing the boundaries in some of our execution, our strategic planning. I don't like doing things that everybody's done before, you know, and I think I'm so passionate about my work. And, you know, I encourage the teams that I work with to to always push the boundaries. You always think about, think differently. And that that's what gives me the buzz. And I think that that confidence has grown over the years, being in industry, you know, before I'd, I'd have an idea, but maybe wasn't confident enough to voice it to my bosses or my peers, you know, but I think the, that has grown over time. They think, you know what, Rose, this is a good idea. Let's, let's kind of work on the steps to execute it or, you know, see who, which teams can help build that and, and uh, land the idea. So for me, you know, it, it is that, that uh, creative output in marketing just to ensure, let's just keep doing something different, but it's, it's the confidence to do that. Um, so that's the kind of challenges that I, I really love. And, you know, and there could be kind of neighboring challenges around that, whether it's finance or, or resource. But again, it's it's just something that you always work on. If you can see the end result, then that's what kind of keeps me going. I think you're so right. And one is just like, um, just have the like have the courage of your convictions like go like go for it you know there's plenty of, and back to what Nina was saying like this isn't an industry for pessimists otherwise we would get nothing done because there's yeah. lots of reasons to not do you know <laughs> to not take a risk to not take a chance you know um and it doesn't always like work out and that's okay like I think that's the point of it is like you learn from it even if you go for it and you think oh man when we get to the other side it's gonna look like this and like it doesn't like mm -hmm. it's not like 
for nothing because like you learn from it and then you're like, okay, so next time I won't do this, this, and this, I'm going to try this differently. I didn't, you know, take this into consideration. So I just think that like, I'm, I'm like you Rose of just like, just like, like go for it. Like just have the confidence because you never know what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And, it, and it is like success or failure either way. You're going to learn a ton from it. Yeah. Yeah. Just be comfortable with being uncomfortable, right? Just come out of that, that template that you have, that you set yourself yeah so no I love that because one of the things I love to do uh, and if I give advice to to people I work with or friends um always say don't worry about the journey think about the destination visualize yourself at that goal and for me it's like you know launching the day that I launch my game right and I'm super excited see myself with the team being super excited about that I will work out you know all of the challenges and the bumps along the way to get to that point and I, I actually think that works really really well it, I, I think you have to take yourself out of the now problems because yeah. it's always going to be a different a different challenge next week and a different challenge the week after and it's just it's just development and, and being creative. I actually think that, you know, part of the creative process is, is to prove something doesn't work as much as something does work, right? So um, fail fast, right? Um, so, uh, but I actually really love that. I really love tinkering with something. I really believe in this. Okay, this doesn't work. Great, I'll move over here and go to the next thing. And I think it, it's like we were saying, you know, every day is different. Every day you just, you just don't know what to expect. And I actually think that that's the part that I love about my my job is the day to day of I don't know what's going to happen today. Let's go with the flow. <laughs> and I think part of what you said, Rose, as well, is like being comfortable with that, because sometimes people aren't comfortable with that. Mm-hmm. And I think when you get comfortable with that, you can really enjoy the flow of, of your days and weeks in, in the games industry. Yeah, I think that um, that comfort thing is so interesting, too, because I think if I'm comfortable, I'm not growing, you know, like I'm not progressing. Like I need to get into work that's like a little bit bigger than what skills I have today, you know, so that I can grow into it. I know really early in my career when I made a career change, like I just felt like such a failure. I just felt like, oh, this is like, I don't know what I'm doing. I used to be really good at my old job. Now I'm in this new job. And, you know, maybe maybe I'm not cut out for this. And I went to go see a mentor and I told her, you know, like, do I suck? You know, like, what's going on? And she goes, oh, this is amazing. She's good. This is so great. You're swimming in waters that are deeper than you're used to. And you're building new muscle. And it was like at that moment that I realized this is something I have to, like, in, like integrate into my career. That once I start getting too comfortable in a role, like, it's time to take on something new. It might be time to change a role. But, like, I have to be, like, sort of in this state of being comfortable with being uncomfortable to know that I'm like progressing and growing and that um the being uncomfortable is actually like this great sign that it's like okay like you're you're growing right now you're growing and you're developing oh I love that so much I <laughs> just think that's so true uh because uh, sometimes I mentor um some people across the studio and I always say that there's like this point and I think you've explained about it. it's such a gamey term but it's like you get a moment where you level up and you can almost hear that and you're like oh it's all just like fitting in and slotting into place I get it and like and to to be completely honest like I think everybody goes through those uncomfortable phases especially as you go um as you climb the ladder through the industry and you have you have to you know make more difficult decisions and you have more people to to think about um um I think I think to be completely honest those bits are really hard sometimes and yeah. it can be really hard you know but it's such a wonderful like you said when you have that bling moment and you go oh get and you super learn from it and then you go on to the next thing so I love building up those experiences so I can be a better leader at the end of the day. Yeah. Can I say sometimes you know there's macro factors that force you to be uncomfortable and change your route I and mean, if I think of the route to market some of our games in the Covid climate you know, we, we don't have the support of the physical stores and, you know, thinking when I was thinking about Xbox Series X launch, you know, before in my day when I've done, you know, Gen 9 or, or Gen 8 and 7 launches, we had the the uh, midnight launches and had stores and all that outdoor theatre. It's like, you know, you're, you're forced to change automatically because it's a different climate, you know, so it's almost like there is there has to be a certain level of flexibility in the role because you can't control everything you know so I think that's really important I think obviously I would say this but I really applaud the team for what we were able to do for um, the 
the Xbox Series X launch in the COVID climate, you know, and, and that's that was just phenomenal, you know. So um, it's just having that flexibility and confidence in what you're doing. I think I think you're right as well, Rose. That flexibility, um, being adaptable and flexible. Um, you know, if you're a person who doesn't like change much, this industry is not for you. You know, um, <laughs> but um, you know, being driven by uh, curiosity and and, uh, ev- and and every day's a learning day in this industry. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, you know, all of those tropes, but but. Um, there's there is something again really wonderful about when you wake up and you've got you've got an outline of a day but you know there's going to be some curveballs in there and and that's exciting it's interesting and and um yeah I well I I guess we all get a lot out of it it's great it is I I love that Uh, I because from coming from animation I knew I had a Every day was planned out. I knew exactly what I was going to be doing and what I was going to be doing and how many animations I was going to be doing. And then moving into a leadership and a more senior role, it's less about having the plan. And actually, that was a bit that I took ages getting comfortable with. I'm so used to just having everything blocked out for me that when I came, I was like, I, I don't know what, what today is going to bring. And every day is always really busy. I'm like, uh, my top tip is give yourself a goal of one thing to do every week. And if you get that done, that's an achievement, right? So I have like a post that I'm going to do this one thing this week and I, like, that's it. Uh, and then I feel like I've accomplished something at the end of the week, but I've obviously done a lot more during the week um, uh, to get to that point. But yeah, it's it's definitely very different, but it's like it's that, that sense of curiosity. Um, I think that it, this is a great industry for curious people and tinkerers, you know, people who want to build and create things and, mm. and people, if you want to work with people and, you you know, thinking about this, it's, like we were saying at the start, there's a there's a job for everybody, really. What, whatever your skill set is, I'm pretty sure it exists in the games. Yeah, it's a, you said something in there too, Louise, which I think is important, which is like you have to like to work with people, like yeah. to be in games. Um, like maybe if you're in an indie studio and you're a programmer and you shut the door and that's it. But like if it gets any bigger, you have to work across disciplines. You have to work with a variety of people. And it's not always easy, like, it, and and that's that. It's not meant to be easy, right? Like, but you have to like uh, be good at like listening to other people's ideas, like making a decision with other people, getting all the people in a room. And it's okay if you don't agree, but you all are working towards something together. And that if you really don't, it's funny to say that uh, almost about the games industry, but you really do have to enjoy, you know, working with others and be good at working with others as well. That kind of makes me well go go bring it back to women in games because we talk about the games industry do you do you feel like um it does make a difference having diverse teams when it comes to listening to different perspectives and different experiences and backgrounds and i'm not just talking about women in games it's 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 how we can diversify across the board um do you have you found it obviously as as women in the industry have you found your input being slightly different do you think differently to, to other people and has it helped shape and form some of the decisions that you've been a part of well, I think it should come as a surprise to absolutely nobody that if you've got a wider range of voices in the mix, you're gonna you're going to have a richer game at the end of the day. You know, it, it a it's a pleasure to work in an environment like that. Yeah. Um, and and b you're going to get a better product. You know, mm-hmm. like like there there are there are wins across the board with that. Um, and you know, there's a lot of work that we certainly need to do to bring a lot more women into our industry, but um, I, I would hope that women feel really welcomed. It, it is, I know there are a lot of stories here and there and things, but for the most part, it, it's an extremely warm and welcoming environment. And and yeah, well, we all clearly love it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that was one of the first things that I noticed when I first joined Microsoft is that I've, you know, we have a number of amazing female directors and department heads. And, you know, I, 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 I totally agree that, you know, it's we need such a, a diverse or we have such a diverse like melody of leaders, which is so impactful 
you know, for a, from a representation narrative as well. You know, I don't think we can ever underestimate how important it is for young girls to see someone like themselves holding those positions. You know, I when I first started out, there were very few female leaders, you know, or certainly I didn't work in as, uh, as diverse a workplace as it should be. And I totally agree. I've always said that, you know, the, the team that makes the games has to be as diverse as the end user, as the people that play our games. You know, so it's you think it's an obvious thing, right? But um, that yeah, I think that's so important. Yeah, and what I would tip in and say is um, it prevents this group think, right? And it, it, you know, introducing new ideas, new perspectives. So I think you also have to be careful to um, make space for those voices as well, right? Because if you are the only woman in a room, you know, if you are the only person of color in the room, like, are you know, are you given the space or are you expected to just go along with what everybody else is mm -hmm. saying, right? Are you, are you expected to fit in, you know? And I think that, as women, it's, um, I feel like it's very important for me to use my voice. I don't have a seat at the table. I have a voice at the table, right? And so, you know, if there's women coming into the industry, I would say use your voice and find those environments where you're heard, where like that is seen as a value to say, actually, I see it a little bit differently. Or when I look at that, I see this. You know, and for there to be an environment that has like inclusion, you know, for a variety of voices. Mm. It's funny you say that, Mary. All I remember is that I, I found it hard to find my voice. I think that I'm an actual introvert. And, you know, I think that definitely in the industry, there was a perception, a template of what a boss should be like, right? And it, of, of, it used to draw from dated male stereotypes. You know, you had to be loud in the boardroom. You had to be a heavy drinker in, in some aspects. And I never did fit that mold. You know, I'm a thinker. It, you know, I'm in, I'm in a meeting and it takes me a while before I want to say something. And so I felt I found it hard to find my voice because I didn't quite fit into that template. So, so now it's different, you know, right? And and I do feel that I have found my voice, and I, I can be me and still be an effective leader as well without judgment. So I think that's that's a an important point, I guess, and a, a key change when I think of my journey in, in the industry as well. And it's so important too to see people like yourself, right? Who says this is what a leader looks like, right? So you yeah. know that um, here's how Rose is going to contribute to the conversation, and and done a lot of work on this over my 20 years in the industry, right? Of just like, hey, are you somebody who maybe you're going to write a paper about this, that you're not the person in the meeting who's going to be, you know, I'm an extrovert, I'm a think out loud. So all of the, the meeting culture works really well for me most of the time. But there's times when I want to like push back a little bit and have a think, you know, and, um, and you know, exhibiting that, saying like, okay, gosh, I really didn't make my point in that meeting. Yeah, I'm going to like follow up an email afterwards. Hey, actually, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so demonstrating that. But I do think it's important for women in particular to look up and see a variety of different leadership styles to say, wow, that person's being themselves. I could be myself and a leader. Like I don't need to change who I am fundamentally in order to be successful. Mm -hmm. I love that so much. I remember when I first got into the kind of direction, you know, uh, senior leadership part uh, at the studio, uh, somebody took me to one side. This is going to sound terrible, but I learned a lot from it. Um, and they said that they didn't think I could do it because, well, because I needed to be more of a, a B. I won't say the word because I'll get in trouble. Look at me not cursing. A boss. You need to be more of a boss. I need to be more of a boss. <laughs> I remember thinking because we've you know as you were talking about rose it's like coming from a culture where you're surrounded by every it's like it can be aggressive and i just i didn't want to be that I, I i made a decision at that very exact moment very consciously i will never be that type of leader i want to lead with empathy i, I want to believe in my team i want to get to know my team and actually my my one thing i always say to people is rapport is an investment Mm -hmm. and, and it's easy for me I, I, again I'm an extrovert shock horror um but I love I love getting to know people and I love I love understanding the different perspectives and backgrounds not everybody is sees the world the way I see it I love understanding how other people see it um and I think I think you're right it's so it's so wonderful I, honestly you've no idea how excited I was to be in a room like this chatting to you and just like it's so inspiring to be surrounded by incredible women who have incredible stories who do incredible things in our industry it's awesome yeah. 
<laughs> making everyone blush. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna start crying. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I mean, this this is this is rare that we even speak like this. I mean, again, I'm just thinking about my journey in the industry to have you know to speak with you know fellow leaders in the industries is is remarkable. Female leaders that that's something again that I I I'd never seen you know in, in the early days. So um, again, I don't take it for granted. It is yeah. remarkable. It it is inspiring and it's, it's amazing. Um, I I, I suppose because I could I will spend hours talking to you and never let you go but if we wanted to just like say a final thing I'm trying to think what what is the one if you could go back in time right I'm changing all my questions I pre-thought out if you could go back in time at some point in your career what is the one piece of advice that you would give yourself let's start with you Nina because you look like you're thinking about it now (laughs) I, I am thinking about it and um, and it's a tricky one because I, th- I think s- some of the things that I've done over time, it, it um, I've, I, I have certainly been a little bit naive going into that and just assume it'll be okay, you know, and, and in a way, in a way I wouldn't want to change that, <laughs> you know, because I, I think... It, it does go back to that optimism that's that that I think is so important and and a belief obviously you've got to do all the work but but having a, a genuine belief that you're doing the right thing thinking about it um, following a vision um, I'm not saying blindly of course but just I think if if you hold that to the front then then you're going to make good choices what would I go back do you know what actually no I've got one if I if I could go back to me sort of on more or less day one of uh, setting up my company, I would tell myself that there aren't really in, any competitors. The people you think are your competitors are probably going to be the people that will be able to help you the most. Oh, that's mm. so good. Oh, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm writing that down. Yeah, I'm going to use that next time someone asks me. <laughs> yeah, Mary. Oh, over to you. Follow. <laughs> it is. Um, I'm. I'm like Nina because I. I kind of feel like, hey, what I did then got me here now. But was there was there anything that would like alleviate any sort of angsting or anything along the way? And it is something I learned. Maybe I don't know. Maybe a decade into my career, which is like, it is perfectly fine to have a career plan, career plan that's based on interest and instinct. Cause that is a hundred percent been my career plan. I would sit down with managers and they'd be like, well, where do you want to be in 10 years? I was like, I don't even know what my next job is. Like, I don't even have a vision for that. They're like, well, whose job do you want? I was like, I want mine, you know? And I've always been this like weirdly in the moment, in the present you know, person where it's just like, I love what I'm doing now and nobody else is doing this thing. So this is what I want to be doing. Uh, And then I will, I will know what the next thing is. Right. And that it is okay. It's okay to have a career plan and map it totally out to where you want to go. It's also okay to figure it out as you go along. You know, for me, like we were talking about earlier, like what that means is I have to keep growing. You know, I have to keep figuring out how do I have more impact? How do I, enjoy the work that I do, you know, like I have to be having all these things, um, but that it's okay to just kind of follow my head and follow my heart and follow my gut into like what the next thing is. And that that's a perfectly good career plan. And there's nothing else I need to figure out beyond that. Mm. That was pretty good as well. (laughs) That was really awesome. I mean, I, I would say for me, I'd, I'd say probably just to to have more confidence in my conviction. You know, I always doubted myself, whether it's my my ideas or the strategic path I wanted to do or even my career path. So for me, it would always be just just have that confidence and keep going. You know, you don't have to to conform to anybody's perception to be successful. You know, I think it's it's those are the kind of things that I struggled with. I think, um, you know, I'd, I'd happily 
tell an idea or something to a colleague and you know watch them kind of speak about it because I, I didn't I didn't have that confidence myself so for me it's definitely a confidence thing um that's what I would tell the old the young rose it's just step out of it you know it's, it's gonna be all right <laughs> But I think it, I think it's it is definitely all of the decisions and choices we've made have led us to to this conversation today. This is it, mm. ladies. By the way, the culmination of of all of our years of work. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, but I, I, and I think it's really. I know I asked you the question, but when I try, I sometimes think, what could I have done differently? What could I have done better? And I, I love where I am now, and I love the learning that I've gone on, and I love the journey that I've gone on with with Rare and Xbox. Um, and so I don't know if I would change anything, but I definitely the confidence thing. I think I, I agree with all of you on, on little bits and pieces of it. Um, and I think I would I would love to go back and tell myself not to worry what other people think, and I don't just mean. Mm -hmm. um, people I work with or worrying about whether I'm I'm showing up to to my boss or even even people you know it, it, audiences and people who are playing my games and you know some people don't like some of the games that I've made and some people really like some of the games that I've made but it's like don't worry about what people think and actually just be and, and and part of why I'm saying that is one of the big things I've learned is about being direct but being direct and empathetic at the same time I have found that the best leadership skill that I have now is that I'm open and honest with people how I can help support them through their careers and be better uh, as part of the team or support them to be better as part of the team by being really open and direct with people and not being afraid of what they might think of me for being open and direct and you can do it without being a beat by the way like you can do it empathetically you can do it with caring because it's always coming from a good place it's a great answer Louise that's a good one that's a good one I like that a lot <laughs> Um, and just to let you know, we're very excited to announce the next phase of our Women of Xbox UK initiative. So we can have a little drum roll. Thank you. Thank you. Drum roll. We are going to be launching a whole brand new podcast. Uh, the Women of Xbox UK podcast will be hosted by none other than our very own Xbox Ons, Charlie Hodson, and will feature inspiring women from across Xbox Xbox across a variety of different roles from studio heads to creative and marketing leads and everything in between. Uh, so if you thought this was interesting, wait till you see what Charlie has planned. Uh, it's going to be an eight part video series and it will be launched towards the end of the month. And I'm thrilled to say that excitingly, Charlie's very first guest will be yours truly. So <laughs> I'm so sorry, this might be overkill. <laughs> <laughs> There's, there is such a thing as too much Louise. Um, so uh, <laughs> um, hopefully you can join us. I'm going to be speaking to Charlie a little bit about my journey in, in the industry and maybe some of my favorite games and why I love them. And I'll probably talk a lot about Xbox and Rare um, because I love all things Xbox and Rare and maybe offer some advice. Although I feel like you've gotten all of the best advice you could possibly muster from this particular conversation. So look out for further announcements on our social channels. I absolutely can't wait. Thank you again, ladies. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks so much. Thanks. It was a great conversation. Thanks, Louise. <laughs> Thanks so much. So good to talk to you guys. Bye.